If you ever scroll past those tiny Raspberry Pi computers and wonder who actually uses these things? Coders? Tinkerers? Nerds in the basement? Well, I've been a Mac and PC user for over a decade, but never touch a Pi until now. So let's dive together into the iRasp deck, Raspberry Pi 5 with 16 gigs of RAM. Whether you're stumbling on this kit for the first time or you already watched 10 Pi reviews and want that 1% insight no one's talking about, this one's for you. So hit subscribe and let's start with the unboxing. And just a heads up, everything comes neatly packed but in separate smaller boxes inside the main box. So it feels more like a mini build your own kit rather than a typical plug and play device. The first box reveals the main board. And this is the actual Raspberry Pi 5 computer, a full PC on something the size of the credit card. It's small, dense and a little mind blowing if you've never seen one before. Next up, micro HDMI to HDMI cables. Both support 4K at 60Hz. At first glance I thought they were micro USB, but no, it's micro HDMI, which is a smaller than usual full size HDMI port you would find on a standard PC or Mac. Then there's a metal case. It's basic, compact and perforated for airflow with cutouts and screw holes to fit the board. Inside the case box there is also a tiny cooling fan and heatsink assembly, already prepped with bolts that line up with the Pi board. Also included a 256GB microSD card and this is a fast one which is important. Speed matters, especially if you're loading apps or running light AI tasks. The OS, Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm, it's already pre-installed, so you're ready to go. There's even a card reader adapter in case your PC or Mac doesn't have a microSD slot. We won't use it in this video, but it's nice to have. Next, there's a small Phillips screwdriver, and yes, I'll be using this in a minute. Then we've got the 27 watts USB-C power brick. This one's UK plug style, but iRaspLex ships the correct version based on your country. And finally, at the bottom, paperwork, a quick start guide and a really handy GPIO pen map. That's for the big block of pins on the Pi board. I'm still learning what it all does, but hey, it's there for the tinkerers. Putting it all together, surprisingly intuitive. Even as someone who's never touched a Raspberry Pi before, I didn't need to open the manual. Just line up the parts, tighten a few screws. Everything fits nicely. There are these little springy plastic clips that hold the main board, fan and heatsink in place. And don't forget the power button. It's a small transparent plastic bit that slots into the case. The included screwdriver is magnetic, so that makes it even easier. Generally a pleasure to assemble. Now screw the main board onto the bottom lid of the case. All the screws are the same size, so unless you're really trying, there's no way to screw it up. Once that's in, just close the case, tighten the final screw, slot in the SD card, plug in the power, monitor, keyboard and mouse, and it boots. That's it. Let's talk specs. The Raspberry Pi 5 runs a 2.4 GHz quad-core Cortex A76 CPU paired with a 16 gigs of LPDR4X RAM and vastly improved Video Core 7 GPU. That translates into a desktop that's surprisingly usable. I had 10 browser tabs open, ran some Python scripts, streamed YouTube and even did light image editing, all without breaking a sweat. The OS feels like Linux with a splash of vintage windows, fast, stable and familiar. And with dual 4K HDMI outputs, it's totally usable as a light office workstation or even a student computer. I didn't dive into retro gaming, though with RetroPie etc it's very doable here. Instead, I used it as a regular PC. Chromium and Firefox come pre-installed and YouTube, Google Docs and Gemini AI, I connected a USB SSD, launched VLC and streamed high-res movie files, no stuttering. If you wanted to, you could easily turn this into a home media center with something like Kodi or a torrent or magnet link streamer. Originally I was planning to use it as a home NAS, but instead I pivoted and built my first AI model, right on the Pi. 
I opened Genie, which is more capable than a simpler Thony, launched Google Gemini side by side, and together we built a basic stock price predictor using Keras API. The Pi pulled real data using Yahoo Finance, cleaned it with Pandas, scaled it using Scikit-learn, and trained a simple LSTM neural network all locally. It even plotted the results using matplotlib, and yeah, it worked. Is it going to replace your workstation for training large models? Of course not. But as a hands-on machine learning playground, it's brilliant. After a few hours of testing and AI training, I checked the thermals with a thermal camera. 48 Celsius max at the hottest point through the vents. Noise virtually silent. It never exceeded 30 decibels. Whisper quiet, even in a silent room or library. One word, versatile. You get USB 3, USB 2, Gigabit Ethernet, Bluetooth 5, PCIe via HAT, Dual HDMI, and the classic 40 pin GPIO header. I plugged in an external SSD and it worked instantly. If you want to build your own NAS, media server, or something totally custom, you can. Office, school and family use, this is where things get real. For day-to-day -day stuff like documents, email, basic coding, Zoom calls, even running a home server, this works. The pre-installed OS includes office tools, a file manager, calculator, task manager, media player and a bunch of programming tools. In fact, together with my 9 years old son, we managed to write a simple ping pong game complete with an AI opponent. I'm hoping this is the start of his coding journey because, let's be honest, it's a far better way to spend time than endlessly swiping through whatever mind-numbing stuff social media throws at kids these days. Learning the basics of coding, especially with a little AI boost, can actually give them a head start in life. So parents, something to think about. I even tested it as a portable file server during travel. Handled it like a champ. Just note, Wi-Fi can be weak. Use Ethernet when possible. If you're expecting a Mac Mini or high-end Windows PC, you'll need to reset your expectations. But if you're open to something different, flexible, affordable and educational, the Pi 5 just might surprise you. As a long-time Mac and PC user, I finally get the Pi. It's not just a board, it's your media hub, your coding lab, your server, your retro console or your first AI project. Got more Pi projects on your plate? Hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell so we don't miss the next bite-sized adventure. Thanks for watching and remember, tech is better when you make it yourself. This kit from iRaspDeck caught me eye, not just because it's budget friendly, but because it claims to be a full mini PC, complete with a case, cooling, power adapter and a preloaded OS on a 256 gigs microSD. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Family Pop TV. Family.